Okay, let's see if we can't uh, show people how to find the editing function into Moodle. So I'm logged uh, I'm on my Moodle page. Let me go ahead and log in real quick while we're doing this. And this is a great function. And um, as you can see, that my Moodle page came up. So I'm going to just go to one of my courses that I'm currently in. And I'm going to turn the editing function on. Then I'm just going to pick one thing just so that you can see how this will work. And this is pretty much the same for any assignment or anything you want to build into Moodle that has a uh, function that allows you to insert some comments. So typically, whenever you have open up your Moodle page, you will see it, something that will look like this that will give you the paragraph and bold italics and things like that. But if I want to expand this to get more functions, whenever I click into this three rows of dots, it expands this. And what I'm really interested in is how do I get this inf additional information right here? And I'm gonna show that to you momentarily. But this is where I can come in and I can add color to the text if I want to, or if I want to add color to the background, we can do that. So it gives, gives you a little bit more editing capabilities whenever we do this. And how we're going to do this is that we're going to go back up to my preferences and I'll show you back up in here. So but let me come back to here up under your profile. When we call down the preferences, we hit this down arrow, it pulls up this dialog box, which gives us different things we can go do. What we're interested in is in the preferences. And in the preferences, there's two things that I'm interested in. The first one, of what we're talking about here, is called editor. So under editor preferences, what I'm looking for in this dialog box is it's probably going to be set to a default editor. And what the editor that we want to use is the tiny MCEM, excuse me, tiny MCE HTML editor. And once you click that, have that clicked and save, that will allow you to get to those functions that we just saw that expands that editing capability in the HTML file that you can go in and type in text. While we're here, if you use discussion forms, and in those discussion forms, you always want to know when a new uh, thread has been added to it. A way to wish to do that under the form preferences is that you see here under um, form tracking, well, it's probably going to be set to no, don't keep track of posts I have seen. But if we take that to highlight, yes, highlight the new post for me, what that tells Moodle is that anytime a new form is posted or a new thread is posted, it will highlight that post and it will, and mine turns it yellow so that I can know that now I have a new thread that, that just came in. So, and what you will see when you open up your course page, if, again, if you're using discussion forms, like I think I'm using here, if I had a new discussion that came in out to the side of this word called form, right about here, you would see a yellow box with, I think it says something about a new new post. So that tells me that something has been added, especially if I have a class full of students that are doing multiple posts. So that's kind of how you can get to um, editing capabilities that where you can expand the um, adding color and to enhance your editing capabilities in the HTML boxes here. And we showed how to add 
in your preferences to get how to um, add a new discussion form when it comes in where you can see it out to the right hand side of that discussion form and it will turn yellow. Now what I also, last thing, I also like to use collapse topics in my Moodle shells just simply for the reason that it's a little bit easier and I don't have to scroll down so much. I can scroll down to a specific week or if I want to open it all, which is you know the traditional method that we use a lot. But I, I like to use collapse topics a lot because it just makes it easier for navigation and I don't have to go through everything I can go through and select the weeks that I want. And if you're interested in doing that, as we look at here under the editing capabilities, uh, we want to go to, uh, obviously I, I hit the down arrow, I want to do more. And doing more, I want to look at the uh, edit settings under the course administration. And under the course administration, let me make sure I got expand all. Here under the course format, you typically will see it, it's probably going to be defaulted to the weekly format. Well, I take it to the collapse topics in the number of weeks that I have in that particular course, whether it's five or eight, or in this case, this is a 15 week traditional course. But by the time I add, a, a, built the core shell, it's actually going to be 17 weeks to get to the final exam. So that's the reason why I have 17 different sections. And as you can see, I have the hidden sections are shown in the co collapse form. I can use the toggle function where I can toggle individual weeks or all weeks. And it gives me this, you can see the topic, the week by day. But I'll go in and do some editing to put in the specific information that I want. And the colors and how you want the text align, that, that's really a personal preference. But, but as you can see what I did, just to give you a flavor of one way to do it, certainly not the only way to do it, but a way to do it. But I like the collapse topics, again, just from the standpoint that it allows uh, editing and it allows where I don't have to scroll through all the text to get where I want them to go, I can go to a specific way. And to me, it just looks a little bit neater. I've never had a, a student who say, no, don't do that. Um, but uh, I, I'm always interested in trying to find a better way to provide content. So I hope this helps and do have a great day today.